human relationship with the natural environment is a complicated one. There is no doubt that we depend upon nature for our physical survival. And recent studies now suggest that nature is also important for our mental health. Over the last 15 years, a growing body of evidence has emerged, indicating that nature fulfills basic psychological needs for humans. The importance of nature cannot be overstated. Perhaps this is why hundreds of millions of people visit the world's national parks each year. In many ways, the development of the national park system is one of the greatest environmental success stories of our time. Just 150 years ago, there were no national parks anywhere in the world. Today, there are almost 7,000 in nearly 100 countries worldwide. As a result, there are now more than 835 million square acres around the world that have been set aside for protection through national park programs. While this achievement is clearly the result of thousands of people working together, the success of the national park movement owes much of its existence to the commitment, vision, and passion of one particular man, John Muir. John Muir was a naturalist, author, mountaineer, and political activist. He is widely considered to be the founding father of national parks. Muir wrote more eloquently about the beauty and dignity of nature than perhaps any other author in history. His writings have been read by millions worldwide and have inspired activists all across the globe. This is his story. John Muir was born in Dunbar, Scotland in 1838, the son of successful middle-class parents. When John was just 11, his family emigrated to the United States and settled in Wisconsin, where they set up a small but lucrative farm. Although John never attended school, he was self-educated and unusually bright and was accepted into the University of Wisconsin, where he studied botany and geology. While he dropped out before earning his degree, Muir learned a lot there that would help him in later years. For most of his 20s, he traveled around working odd jobs. Then, at the age of 29, he had an accident that would change his life. While working in a factory, his hand slipped and the sharp end of a tool went straight into his eye. As a result, he temporarily lost his sight and was confined to a darkened room for several weeks. As Muir waited for the bandages to come off his eyes, he spent most of his time sitting in fear, worried that he might never see again. Fortunately, his eye healed completely and his sight was fully restored. And when he emerged from the darkness, he was a new man with a powerful drive to see the world. He quit his job and decided to go forth and explore the wilderness. Almost immediately, Muir set out on his first journey, walking 1,000 miles from the state of Indiana to the state of Florida, taking the most wild and undeveloped paths he could. He made it to Florida safely, and from there he jumped on a ship and eventually made his way to California. In a matter of days, he discovered the Yosemite Valley, a place that would forever change his life. Muir was overwhelmed by the beauty of the landscape and was determined to spend as much time there as possible. He explored the surrounding area, climbing mountains, studying plants, and documenting the geology of the region. Climb the mountains and get their good tidings, Muir wrote. Nature's peace will flow into you as sunshine flows into trees. Muir quickly became a fixture in the area. Eventually, he was known locally and respected for his skill as a nature guide and his talent as a storyteller. After several years, Muir left the woods and came back to civilization, this time with a renewed sense of mission. His goal was to write about nature and help his fellow countrymen develop a stronger connection to the wilderness. He felt nature had saved his soul, and he wanted to share that experience with others. In God's wildness lies the hope of the world, he wrote, the great, fresh, unblighted, unredeemed wilderness. Locally, his writing was well received. Then, in 1875, Muir published his first article in a nationally distributed magazine. His poetic style and powerful ideas struck a chord with the readers, and he was now starting to become famous nationwide. For several years, Muir continued writing, developing his own unique voice. Then, in 1878, as he neared the age of 40, his friends pressured him to settle down and start a family. After a short courtship, he married Louisa Strenzel. By all accounts, Muir was a loyal husband and a devoted father. Still, his heart was always in the wild, and he continued to visit Yosemite as often as he could. Finally, in 1889, Muir met with Robert Underwood Johnson, an editor at an influential journal. Johnson urged Muir to begin writing again and become more politically active. Muir was reluctant at first, but soon immersed himself in his writing once more, taking up various environmental causes. 
He wrote with his typical insight and passion, and soon he began to win political victories. In 1890, Muir's writings helped to win state protection for Yosemite Valley. Later, Muir also helped establish the Sierra Forest Reserve, which set aside 13 million acres of land to protect California's stunning sequoia trees. Perhaps one of his greatest contributions came in 1892, when Muir met with a small group of nature enthusiasts and co-founded the Sierra Club. The group immediately elected him president, a position he held for 22 years until his death. Under Muir's leadership, the club expanded its membership, took on numerous political battles, and engaged in public relations efforts to change popular attitudes. Today, Sierra Club is the largest grassroots environmental group in the world, with more than 1.3 million members. Over the years, Sierra Club has helped to establish numerous national parks and secure passage of more than a dozen groundbreaking environmental laws, including the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, and the Wilderness Act the first wilderness protection legislation in the history of the world. Muir's incredible legacy is impossible to deny. Sadly, on Christmas Eve 1914, Muir died of pneumonia at the age of 76. In his lifetime, he wrote 300 essays and 12 books, all about his favorite topic, nature. Today, there are numerous wild places named after him, including Muir Trail, Muir Woods National Monument, Muir Beach, and Muir Glacier. John Muir is an exemplar of using inspiration as a form of activism. He literally used the power of the pen to persuade others and mobilize a movement to preserve what he loved, the wilderness. His name lives on and his words continue to inspire. Everybody needs beauty as well as bread, places to play in and pray in, where nature may heal and give strength to body and soul.